Hollywood recap here. In a frozen land, people lived in fear of the dragon that abducted brides and killed them. People would sacrifice their daughters in a ritual that summoned the dragon, which would then choose which bride to take away. This ritual continued for years until a knight pursued the dragon to save the woman he loved. Although he was too late, he nevertheless slew the dragon, and he became known as the Dragon Slayer. The brutal ritual then became a wedding ceremony. Generations passed, and now the land lives in peace. The duke's daughter, Miroslava, also known as Nera, will be wed to the Dragon Slayer's grandson, Igor, the mightiest knight in the land. At the docks, the people chant Igor's arrival. While her hair is being braided by her sister, Yaroslava, nicknamed Yara, Mira laments that no more dragons exist. Irked by her childishness, Yara yanks Myra's hair, and their argument escalates when Mira mocks Yara for being an old maid with no true love. Their bickering ends when the duke, their father, arrives and lambasts Mira for not behaving like a future duchess. He's sure she and Igor will learn to love each other. Soon, it's time for her wedding. Donning her elegant gown, she lies on a boat while the women around her give their offerings, and she is eventually carried to the light. Sadly, Myra's special day turns into a nightmare. In reality, no one expected the dragon to be alive, and it took Mira away through stormy skies. She wakes muddied in a dark cave, scared and disoriented. She remembers the wound on her side from the dragon's talons. The dragon took Mira to a remote island and dropped her inside the cave, causing her to lose her wedding dress before she fell into a hole. Looking around, Mira finds the hole she'd fallen from. Determined to survive, she climbs and grabs her dangling wedding dress, but a cat-like creature startles her, causing her to fall. It crawls down and snarls at her, so she takes a rock in her defense. Suddenly, a male voice pierces the darkness, telling her to lie down instead and show her neck. The creature snarls and approaches, almost biting Myra's neck, but it leaves her alone. Mira stands and asks if the person speaking is her savior sent by Igor, but he denies it. So, she asks him to help as she's the duke's daughter, but he, unfortunately, can't. Mira concludes he's also a prisoner. She learns the creature that almost attacked her is the dragon's sentry. The dragon is away sleeping, says the man, but it's not safe for them to talk. Despite Myra's questions, he refuses to elaborate and says she's on her own. Desperate, Mira bangs on the wall, begging, but she stumbles because of her wound. When asked why her people sang the ritual song, summoning the dragon, Mira says they thought the dragon was gone. Igor, her groom, also wanted to sing it. The memory of her supposed wedding brings Mira to tears. She remembers her boat on the water when her father and sister appeared before the crowd. Yara looked with contempt as Igor got welcomed with cheers. Taking the rope connected to Myra's boat, he began pulling her as the soldiers chanted the ritual song. Suddenly, a snowstorm overtook them. The dragon, long thought dead, appeared and carried Myra's boat away. The duke tried reaching out, but the dragon was too swift. Igor pulled the rope tighter, and Mira fell free, but Igor's soldier saved him from the falling boat. Unfortunately, the dragon snatched Mira and flew away. In the cave, Mira sees a hand through a small hole. The man made some paste from crushed leaves to soothe her wounds, and Mira takes it. Through the hole, she sees her companion, who doesn't look like a prisoner. Mira introduces herself, but her companion doesn't remember his name anymore since he never needed it. As Mira removes her clothes to apply the paste on her back wound, the man comments about her beauty. Confused about her being self-conscious, he wonders why he can't look at her. Not minding the question, Mira instead asks if he tried running away, but it's an island, and sailing won't work either. So, she plans to kill the sentry and flee while the dragon sleeps, but the man advises her to wait for the dragon slayer as they could never escape the dragon. Irked, Mira calls him a coward and seals the hole so he can never see her again, regretting that she thought of choosing a name for him. She takes matters into her hands and cuts her braided hair. The voice speaks again and clarifies he's not a coward, but the dragon is just unbeatable. The man inquires about the name Mira chose, and she calls him Armin for being exotic and mysterious. With Armin apologizing and having a new name, Mira removes the rock covering the hole and extends her hand to get acquainted. But as soon as their hands touch, her arm gets snagged in the hole. The dragon has Armin, and he begs her not to leave. As if on cue, it appears over the cave and roars at Mira. Rocks crumble around Mira, who just crouches in a corner. When the dragon leaves, she talks to Armin and is horrified to hear no response. Angry at the dragon, Mira clutches her braid and uses a rock to anchor herself, but she falls as she tries to climb. Frustrated, she instead slams a big rock against the wall until it finally crashes down. Seeing embers in the air, Mira crawls through the hole. In the cavern, she finds a passageway, but the dragon stands in her path. Panicking, she unwittingly alerts the dragon, and it pursues her. She escapes its grip and hides in a low hole. The frustrated dragon blows fire at her, but she slips inside. The sentry pursues her too. Mira arrives at a precipice, seeing how high she is from the ground and sea. Armin shows up and warns her about falling, but she doubts him when the sentry obeys him. Realizing she's been deceived, Mira starts stepping back and declares the dragon will get nothing. She plummets despite Armin's attempts to convince her. 
As Mira falls, Armin suddenly catches her. His body glows red, shocking Mira. But he asks her to trust him, and he suddenly turns into a dragon. Armin catches Mira in time as they hit the rocks. When Mira wakes, she sees the fallen dragon and crawls away, screaming for help. Meanwhile, Igor leads an expedition to save Mira. The helmsman questions whether Igor remembers the secret route through the fog that his grandfather mentioned, but he gets annoyed with them for not being aware that the dragon is still alive. Their priority is saving Mira. Back on the island, Myra is screaming for help when she notices embers from behind, seeing that the dragon has switched back to Armin. Scared, Mira picks a rock to hit Armin, but she hesitates. The sentry arrives and snarls, but it runs past her and panics over Armin, who's now at the water's edge. Mira tries walking away, but she feels guilty and hauls Armin from the sea. The sentry comes with Myra's torn wedding dress that Mira uses to haul Armin up, grumbling about saving the man who abducted her and vowing to make him bring her home. Finally, Mira pulls Armin all the way to the top of his empty living space. Exhausted from the effort, she collapses beside him. But then she hears him mutter about killing the dragon, and its fire must go out. Suddenly, Armin rises and almost bursts into flames as the dragon spirit attempts to possess him, but he collapses again. Mira decides to return down, yelling for help when she finds an old boat washed ashore. Though she wants to sail, she abandons the idea when a storm comes. Instead, she runs back to Armin and looks for cover, finding a broken ship mast that she uses to create a makeshift tent. When she's done, she again hears Armin talk in his sleep about having his own name. Seeing that Armin is injured, Mira crushes some leaves and applies them over his wounds before using her sleeve as a bandage, all the while asking him not to burst into flames. But he almost does, so Mira sings a lullaby to soothe him, which works. That night, Mira sleeps shivering in the cold, so she scoots closer to Armin for his body warmth. She dreams that Igor has come to save her, but when she breaks the hug, she sees its Armin gripping her close to him. Though she resists at first, she begins melting into a possible kiss. But Mira wakes and finds herself wrapped in a blanket. Later, while relishing a fruit, she finds Armin hunting fish below. But when she descends to talk to him, he just ignores her. Mira confronts him for being wishy-washy and vacillating and asks him to simply talk. Since Armin doesn't seem like he wants to kill Mira, the girl wonders why he won't just take her home. But Armin insists it's not simple. He tells his life story about not wanting to be a dragon like his father after finding a chest full of human items. However, when he witnessed his father being slain, he was overcome with anger and became a dragon. He then saw the memories of previous dragons and their monstrosity. Vowing to end dragons and return to being human, Armin lived in isolation and trapped himself in the narrow passageway inside the cave to restrain the dragon spirit. All was well until he heard the ritual song sung during Myra's wedding, and he couldn't resist the call. He regained his senses with Mira in his clutches. The cave was actually her sanctuary from him, as the dragon spirit awakens each time he touches her, meaning he can't bring her home. So, Mira must wait for the dragon slayer, but his arrival would depend on Mira. Leading Mira to see the entire island, Armin tells her that it's the skeleton of a great dragon. Around them, outsiders will only see a dense fog they'll get lost until they die. Only a loving girl's heart can guide a traveler through the fog, and if Mira loves Igor, he will find her. Kneeling by the shore, Mira picks flowers and tells Armin what it means, giving flowers is an affirmation of love. When she throws the flowers into the sea, Armin asks if Igor will come. Armin wants Mira to wait for Igor in the cave, but he stumbles when walking away. Mira tries helping him, but he warns her that the dragon will come. Mira asks why the dragon hasn't come yet, wondering if Armin's human side is getting stronger. Mira promises that while waiting for Igor's arrival, she'll teach Armin to be human. Afterward, Mira decides to make Armin's den more livable. Hauling some shipwrecked items, they make the place livelier. Armin compliments Myra's beautiful hair, and when Mira envies dragons for flying anywhere, Armin admits that their flight was his first. Then, the two enjoy each other's company. At the beach, Armin admits dragons can see the wind, and he offers to show Mira. Armin lets petals dance in the air while Mira watches, mesmerized. The two stare at each other, and then it starts raining. In their den, the sentry finds Myra's bag full of supplies, but Mira assures that she won't escape. Still, she's packed up just in case. All dressed up, Armin loves how much cozier his home has become. Mira gifts him with a flute and plays a lullaby because she wants it to be his birthday, the birth of a new man. Though Armin wants to forget his birth, Mira assures him she's happy about his new birth. Armin also has a present by the cliff face. While Mira closes her eyes, Armin ignites some fireworks, leaving the girl amazed as she looks at them. Finding it sweet, Mira holds Armin's clothing. That night, Mira wakes up because of an ember. She looks for Armin but finds the dragon, which chases her until it blocks her path. Reaching out, Mira cautiously approaches and touches its chest. She feels its heartbeat, but the heat burns her hand. Now afraid, she runs but gets tripped by the dragon looming over her. As it turns out, it's just a dream, and Mira wakes screaming. Armin is near her, worried that something's wrong, but Mira dismisses it as a bad dream. 
she explains dreams show people the things they fear and desire, and she admits she's scared of the dragon. Armin promises the dragon will never harm Mira because he's been reborn. When he leaves, Armin sits by the fire and plays the instrument while Mira listens. She bids him good night, and he does too. The next day, while Mira bathes in a pool, Armin paces nervously while holding a bouquet he wants to give her. Afterward, Mira wears a red dress and makes a kite, and Armin finally decides to give the bouquet. But then, the dragon possesses him, and the flowers burn in his hand. He struggles and resists until Mira finds him to show the kite, a dragon that can't fly. Thinking she's silly, Armin wonders why Igor hasn't come yet, but it's clear Mira doesn't love him. Realizing this, he reaches out to teach her how to see the wind. Mira learns quickly, and the kite soars away. Myra's hand brushes Armin's, and the dragon spirit responds. The kite string breaks from the heat, and Armin leaves her behind. Surprised he's gone, Mira looks for him, but Armin is busy using the flute to calm himself. When he comes to his senses, Armin finds Myra's boat and realizes she wants to escape. Finding Mira, Armin tells her to approach the altar. He asks her if she's ever wondered why there isn't a single skeleton on the island even though many young women lost their lives in that place. According to Armin, dragons are born from the bride burning alive. He warns the same fate awaits Mira. Armin reminds Mira that he's a monster who will never live as humans do and that it's right for her to fear him. He believes Myra's actions show how much she wants to escape from the maps, the fireworks she can use to signal the ships, and finally seeing the wind. Armin tells Mira to take the east wind because it'll bring her to the open ocean. Mira says the new man needs her, but Armin throws the flute at her feet and orders her to go away. He runs to the passageway to trap the dragon, and Mira can do nothing else but leave. In the morning, Mira walks to the boat and lets the petals guide her path, eventually sailing away. The sentry pursues her, and she begs it to stay with Armin. Unknown to her, Armin lies weak in the passageway. Meanwhile, Igor's men are sailing aimlessly for days, and everyone's on edge. Frustrated, Igor directs the helmsman to turn back, but he defies Igor to protect Igor's family's honor. Angry, Igor threatens the helmsman's life, saying Mira will send a signal for them to know where to go. However, if she doesn't, then it simply means she's already dead. Suddenly, fireworks light the sky, and Myra's boat emerges through the fog. To protect Armin, she lies about the dragon crashing into the cliffs and dying. When the helmsman insists on ensuring the dragon's death, Mira pleads with Igor that she just wants to go home. Finally, everyone seems to be happy, and Myra's wedding resumes. Yara assures Mira she'll forget the nightmare as her new life starts. But Armin, on his island, wonders where he's supposed to fit in. He's grateful to Mira for the short-lived hope. The duke arrives to greet Mira, wanting to tell her something important. While playing with shadow figures, Armin realizes he experienced love and vows the dragon will never harm Mira, and he cries. Mira cries, too, as her father tells her to choose whom she loves. Using the wind, Mira sends a paper dragon flying. She tells Yara about the pain of being away from the one she loves, and Yara thinks she's referring to Igor. Now, Yara has nothing against the wedding because they've proven they love each other as only true love can find the dragon island. Armin imagines kissing Mira, and he wishes her happiness while bidding her goodbye. The wedding ritual happens again, and a child's dragon candy catches Myra's attention. Meanwhile, Armin stands over the precipice as it rains, clutching his flute. The paper dragon lands under Igor's boot, and he pulls the rope to Myra's boat. At the same time, Armin leaps from the precipice to end his life. The dragon reawakens, but Armin calms it with his flute. As Igor pulls the boat, Mira realizes she can't do it and sits up to declare she doesn't love Igor, leaving everyone shocked. Igor thinks she's foolish as he rescued her, but Mira yells she loves the dragon. The crowd's in an uproar. Igor attempts to pull the rope, but Mira removes it from her boat. She stands and sings the ritual song herself to summon Armin despite Igor's warnings that the dragon will kill them all. The duke stares silently at his daughter while the crowd remains hushed, and Yara is teary-eyed. When Mira finishes singing, no dragon arrives. She waits expectantly, but Igor commands his men to take Mira away. Just then, the winds pick up, and the paper dragon flies up just as Armin arrives and takes Mira away. The duke accepts his daughter's decision, but Igor attempts to pierce the dragon with a spear. Fortunately, his helmsman punches him, to Yara's relief. Armin flies Mira away and drops her on the altar. The dragon attempts to burn her, but Mira kisses its face. It freaks out and backs away, and Mira realizes it's used to being feared when it wants to be loved. The dragon roars, but Mira remains unfazed because she loves Armin, whether he's human or dragon. Mira kneels and asks Armin not to leave because she can't be without him. The dragon hesitates but chooses to rest its head on her lap. Then, Mira asks Armin, the dragon, to stay longer so she can get used to him. Years pass and Armin tells the story to their daughter. When she wants to learn more, Mira comes and lays her on the bed. She tells her daughter that the happiness love brings gives people wings to fly. As their daughter sleeps, Armin asks Mira to go with him, leaving the sentry to guard the child. Armin stands in the sunlight and turns into a dragon as Mira approaches. She pats Armin's head and rides him, and they fly away. 
In the air, Armin turns human, and they soar among the clouds. Then, in the golden sky, they share a tender kiss.